this has been in someone's ass. <laughs> I have the humor of a 12 year old, but that aside, Subverse. It's been a little while since we've talked about this game, hasn't it? I intentionally skipped covering the first major update because I wanted to see if uh, Studio FOW could hold their promise that the next update would not take anywhere near as long and that they were actually ramping up to start releasing content on the regular because with a game like Subverse that was released into very early access uh, story content wise it is absolutely vital that you would release the new chapters in a fairly steady and frequent pace. Otherwise, the game is going to completely drop off everyone's radar. It's even more important when it comes to a game like Subverse because it's got pretty much the entirety of the mainstream gaming news media establishment staring down their noses at it, going, What? A pornographic video game? No, no, no! We're enormous prudes now, you see. Snuff, snuff, snuff. And therefore, it is very important to keep your core audience happy, as they are pretty much your marketing branch as well as your player base now. It therefore makes me very happy to say that this major update arrived in a much timelier fashion than the previous one, and if they can keep up this rate of updating the game, I really won't have too much in the way of complaints when it comes to the development process, really. Plenty of new uh, fun animation scenes, along with new missions and story content, because right now, the story is the part that I am enjoying by far the most. It's funny, it's well paced, it's got good dialogue, good voice acting, and a surprisingly intriguing plot for all of its ridiculous silliness. Almost to the point that I... I almost want them to take it a pinch more serious on occasion, but... Oh well. Now... I do have some complaints, however, which I need to get out of the way because there are some core parts of the game that I feel might almost require full rework, though to be realistic it is probably too late at this point, beginning with the turn-based strategy, which is much, 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 much weaker than the shoot-em-up combat. In this update, we get a boss battle, again, in the turn-based system, where the game introduces a new mechanic where you can supercharge one of your waifus into a Super Saiyan mode. And you get introduced to a little scenario that is intended to show you, oh boy, oh boy, this is super powerful, look at her, she turns into a glowy thing and blasts the enemy away. Except she doesn't really turn out to be all that powerful, and she certainly doesn't blast away the enemy. All the um, scene really does is give you one character instead of the usual four, with two abilities, only one of which you can really use if you want to have any hope of actually beating the encounter. And so what you do is you press your one ability, then you wait for the enemy to do all of their things, then you press your one ability and you wait for the enemy again. It's not very interesting at all. And this really is a bit of a core problem with the turn-based strategy mode. It is set up and balanced in a way that I'm not particularly fond of, because it's clearly intended to be very quick, very snappy, very high damage, very high lethality. This comes with several problems, one of which is that it's rapidly making any and all melee mantics, or even melee waifus, rapidly obsolete. Even Killy, a character that I've played with quite a lot, just feels like a liability in the turn by strategy mode, as most of the time she'll hit something once and then get blasted off the board almost immediately, whereas the other waifus are able to stay at range and continue to fire and do damage throughout the whole mission. Another problem is that you can only bring four mantics, and not all of them are equally useful in battle, and so you tend to overly rely on a handful of mantics, leaving the rest almost useless because they don't have any levels, they don't have any additional abilities, and they don't have any stats, and if you start bringing them in now, they will too just be a liability to your ability to complete the mission. Not great design. I 
well, first and foremost, I think you would need some kind of a training room so that you can keep the new mantics up to date with the old ones and actually keep them uh, valid and viable without having to uh, screw yourself over over the course of many, 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 many little missions. That would be very nice. I would also see a little bit of a rebalance to how the combat is done. I'd rather have more units in a slightly larger battlefield and facing off against a bit more enemies, really. Because right now, it's super high lethality. You gotta kill everything on the board the moment it arrives, because the spawning enemies do not halt. Once the first round is over, the next wave of enemies will spawn in, regardless of what's going on, and they will also reset the turn counter if you have actually killed all of the enemies. Say that you've got your four characters, you've killed all of the enemies and you've got one character left. You might think, oh, bullseye, awesome. That'll spawn in the enemy wave and I'll get one free move before resetting the round. I'll get a bonus because I did well. No, it just turns the combat round and round again and you get the enemy wave arriving and sometimes even acting before you can do anything. An enemy acting on the turn it arrives before the player gets to act is a big no-no, particularly in a game where units can take two to three hits tops and you're expected to deal with three waves of enemies. My solution to this, which to be honest again is probably too late to implement, would be make the map a bit larger, give you at least one more slot to bring in units onto the field, and increase the number of enemies a little bit maybe, along with a general increase in the experience rate for the Mantics, and I feel like the situation might feel a little bit more fluid. Now, moving on to the shmup part of the game, this is unquestionably the more solid part of the gameplay. Now, bearing in mind I don't play a whole lot of shoot maps, but to me this feels really good. It's quick, it's super hectic, it keeps you on your toes, it's reasonably challenging, you can't make a whole lot of mistakes before uh, things go sideways, yet I haven't run into any real problems finishing any of the shmup levels so far. And considering I am a complete noob at shoot em ups, that would suggest to me that the balance is pretty good and fairly lenient. Now. I do have a bit of a point to make there as well. In the last big update, there was a mention that a lot of players had been complaining that they were here to, well, watch the form. And they weren't really enjoying the gameplay segment, and they were getting their asses beat again and again, particularly in the shmup parts of the game. The developers chose to address this by adding in a system where if you fail at a mission three times, you can simply choose to skip it. and. Considering the nature of the game, a porn game, I can see that. I can see the rationale for that, absolutely. Though I feel like in this case too, you could probably add in a bit of a optional easy mode. I mean, this isn't exactly Dark Souls, so maybe simply increasing a ship's health or shields might help out a lot for those people who don't play games on the regular and might be struggling a lot with certain aspects of the game. I would like to see customizable difficulties dependent upon the various modes, so you can separate the real-time strategy mode, real-time turn-based, excuse me, from the shmup mode. Maybe you can also toy around with, okay, I want more shields, but I want the same health and so on. That would be ideal. There's also a point to be made about varying up the shoot 'em up gameplay, which the devs are making a very admirable effort in doing. Uh, this time around, for example, there are some top-down segments in some cave kind of stuff, which is interesting, but it's a bit of a blocker because only certain of the waifus are really all that useful. If you bring Killy down there, for example, against bunches of enemies in basically sentry mode, you're gonna have a very hard time since you need some kind of ranged sniper weapon to deal with them as they're basically camping around rocks and so on. I do appreciate the attempt, however, to break up the uh, shmup gameplay. The stealth section... <laughs> um. I am of the opinion that you really should never introduce a stealth section in a game not purpose made for stealth. I wasn't a huge fan of it, it became rather frustrating rather quickly to me, but again I appreciate the attempt to try and break up the more traditional shoot 'em up gameplay. In fact, maybe the turn based strategy could 
get a little bit of the same treatment and maybe happen upon a more interesting system that feels and flows a little bit better. Honestly, I would like to see more shoot 'em up boss battles, really. Maybe introducing something like uh, mini boss encounters, because I've quite enjoyed the shmup boss segments, but I haven't been a huge fan of the more labyrinthine parts of it. Finally, let's get to what's actually important the waifus. Oh, and incidentally, the story, I suppose, tied to the waifus. The new cat girl is absolutely my favorite, especially after the Valley Girl Dark Elf, which. I gotta say, the Valley Girl accent. It hurts my soul on many, many, many levels, but. Oh well. We have cat girls now, and everything is finally so, so much better. Though I am noticing a little bit of, um. Good old fashioned power creep beginning to set in here. A valley girl has rapid fire, high damage, homing projectiles. That's. That's pretty goddamn good. Uh, meanwhile, Taran has an enormous nuke that spreads out and hits multiple target, and she's probably the best character in the turn-based mode, since she is a melee character with a ranged melee attack, allowing her to decimate the shit out of enemies with high damage, while still remaining safely at range. I get that this is probably to avoid the mantic problem of introducing new characters who will be brutally underpowered by the time you finally get to them, but still, they uh, they do feel perhaps a little bit too good in comparison to the two previous waifus. On that subject as well, uh, one of the key draws of the game is of course the ability to take your waifus off into a private quarter and get all amorous with them. But to do that, you need the uh, puta points resource to actually unlock scenes. Now, it makes a great deal of sense to uh, put these unlocks in a currency form so that you can look at the scenes and go like, okay, I want that one, that one, that one, I don't care about that one, so I'll skip that one, instead of simply having them be story unlocks. I get that, but you're starting to need a lot of these points, and the quests in-game are nowhere near enough to unlock all of them right now. You can also use various uh, pieces of loot you get to increase the devotion level uh, on board the ship, but even then, we're starting to get to the point where the game is starting to tilt rather dangerously towards good old-fashioned grindy territory. And since this should be the roundabout halfway mark, with only three out of the, I believe, six waifus unlocked, I dread what the late game is going to look like. Don't get me wrong, I'm still enjoying the gameplay, and so long as it's coming in uh, installments once every one or two or so months, you know what, I can absolutely deal with it, but from the perspective, the hypothetical perspective of sitting down with this game at some point in the future and trying to play through the entire finished product from the beginning, I have a sneaking suspicion I'd be getting really sick of, at the very least, the uh, the turn-based strategy parts at this point, and I'm thinking the shmup is going to start wearing on my nerves as well. Which is one of the reasons, also incidentally, why it is a very good thing that the devs are trying to add in some more variations to the missions. I'm also actually kind of appreciative of the fact that the uh, story part this time around wasn't particularly long. The introduction to um, my lovely little cat girl was relatively brief. I'd probably say hour, hour and a half of gameplay or so, which might in a way sound disappointing, only an hour and a half. Okay, yeah, but it's just to introduce one character, who will then hopefully have a larger part to play in the wider story thereafter. And again, Taking into consideration the number of times you're going to have to play the shmup and the ground-based combat, I'm actually thinking that the story might want to pick up its pace just a little bit. Again, I mentioned the possibility of uh, mini-bosses in the shmup sequences, because the, uh, the shmup again has a huge variety of enemies, well huge, like four factions or so, which 
is still a fair bit, and they're different factions with different attack patterns keeping you on your toes. This means that the shmup sections, in my opinion, feel a lot less repetitive than the real-time strategy ones. There's different factions there as well, and they do have different abilities, but seeing as the resources in that case is just health, armor, and energy shield, your tactics when facing one enemy compared to the other is not going to change over much. Honestly, using the dog thing, the thing that vomits, and Napoleon, <laughs> those three have brought me through pretty much every combat encounter with zero problems, and it's only when I start experimenting that things start going to hell. All in all, to get to some conclusions here, the quality of Subverse remains really, really high. The voice acting, the story itself, I'm actually genuinely surprised by how much I'm enjoying the story and the humor. The humor is right up my alley. It's this kind of um, absurd combination where you have the angelic robotic figure, the, the, the a forebearer kind of character, big grand dude shoving random things up his ass for shits and giggles. I like that. It's, again, absurd. I do love me some absurdity. The overall delivery to, like, the the angry, human-hating robot. An absolute ridiculous cliché at this point, but done well. And mm, things are clichés for a reason, because they're good. The animation quality is also very, very good, and they're beginning to experiment with more interactive, um, entertainment scenes. Which is nice, seeing as the engine does have a great deal of potential, and the studio FOW dudes are absolutely very, very good at making entertainment scenes. <laughs> we gotta be careful talking about this stuff on YouTube, because whilst we have uh, a lot of very progressive ideas on the modern internet, pornography, for some reason, never really managed to become sanitized cleanlies, uh, accepted into society. Which do confuse me still, considering Pornhub is one of the largest websites in the world, but oh well, minute details and all that. The game is shaping up pretty damn well. I do have some worries about the pacing at this point, again, particularly from the perspective of somebody who would just be starting to play the game. Maybe um, a bit more of an automated option in the menus might be good. The option to disable some voice actors, maybe, in case you don't like certain ones, to skip over them or just get the text up. I mean, don't get me wrong, Valley Girl isn't that bad, but might be a nice option. Some difficulty options would definitely be nice, and honestly... Part of me wants to argue for a story mode here, where you just skip through all of the combat and you just get the unlock points that are, you know, necessary for that point in the story. See, part of me rails against that idea immediately, because one of the coolest things about Subverse initially was the idea that this would be a proper game, a proper video game with a story, with gameplay, with quality stuff besides the porn as well. And again, I'm full of praise for the shmup. I think the turn-based strategy definitely requires a fair bit more work, and the story, again, I really do like. So, skipping all of that just to get to the porn... <sighs> it feels like it denigrates the overall product in a way. <laughs> but maybe that's just my own puritanical way of speaking. All in all, I'm liking the direction Subverse is going in, and the Studio FOW dudes have yet to let me down, so let's hope it continues from there. Till next time, I've been Arch, thank you all very much for listening, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.